Hey, check this out. 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, 6 1,000. Boom! I just got 16,000 records from a SQL table into my Power App. What we want to achieve is to use an existing button. We want it to call a flow. Now we're going into flow. And inside flow, we're going to run our SQL stored procedure. We're going to take only a few of the columns from that stored procedure. We're going to join them. The reason why we need to join them is because flow can send back the array as a text string. That text string goes back into Power Apps. Inside Power Apps, we'll split up that text string so that it's back as an array. For this tutorial, I'm going to be assuming that you've already set up your SQL Server and your SQL Stored Procedures. Let's get started. I'll be creating a flow from a blank template. As a best practice, I want you to get into the habit of starting a flow with Power Apps with uh, the trigger for Power Apps. I'll be doing a search for Power Apps and selecting the trigger. Now go ahead and set the final step, which is going to be responding to Power Apps. Again, I'll search for Power Apps and I'll select Respond to Power Apps. We'll configure this part later. From here, we're going to sandwich everything else in between. I'll go ahead and select my SQL Server. I'll do a search for SQL stored procedure. From here, my list of stored procedures is going to populate. I'll choose it from the drop down menu. If you haven't connected your SQL Server or your SQL Stored Procedures, you'll need to do that first. My next step is to select which columns I want. I'm going to be using the Select step from Data Operations. Here it is. When I click into the From field, I want to take the results of the Stored Procedure. From that, I'm going to select only the columns that I want. And I could use the dynamic content on the right-hand side. I want the number. I want the points. And I want the affect. On the left-hand side, where it says Enter Key, I'm going to be giving it uh, just a temporary column name. This column name is not going to make uh, any sense. It's just for our usage uh, because we're going to be looking for this column name when we get into Power Apps uh, to do some magic. The next step is we're going to join everything that has been selected. Join simply means each take each row and stick them side to side in one text string. Do a search for join. It's another data operation. In the from field, I'll take what was in the select action and I'll be joining it with, uh, with uh, a slash and the letter N. You could join it with anything that you want. Whatever it is, you'll be identifying it later anyway. Now that everything is in a text string, we could pass that text string into Power Apps in the Respond to Power Apps field. Click the plus sign and then choose text. We'll give this text string a name. I'll just call it return. And in the enter a value to respond, I'll choose whatever had uh, been outputted from the join step. Our flow is ready. I'll save it. Oh, and let's give it a name first. I'll 
I'll call it SQL stored proc. I'll save it. Let's go into an app. I've pulled up an app that lets us look into what flow can return to Power Apps. This giant block of text here is only a small part of the text string that uh, I had programmed inside the flow. A record will look like this. A, the information for A, B column, the information for the B column, and C, the information for the C column. Because we use the join function in the flow, they're all stuck together with this slash n character. Since they all have that slash n character, we can search for it and eliminate it and split up each of those records from there. We'll, we'll be using the split function to achieve that. So let's take a deep dive into this formula. Here I've got my button that's going to be triggering my flow. It starts with setting a variable true and ending with setting that variable to false. I'm just using that to start and stop this timer down here. So I could see how is this flow performing? I begin by setting this variable, uh, it's called bank ledger JSON, to whatever is sent back from the flow. The name of my flow is SQL stored procedure, run is its command, and it doesn't take any arguments, so the parentheses are empty. Return is the name of the text string that I, uh, that I had named uh, when building my flow. So all of those records are strung together in text and set to this variable. This variable is going to be split up. So here's my split function. All of this text, anytime it sees slash n, like right here, it'll make a new record. Here's what a record looks like. And let's dive in a little bit more. Here in OneNote, I'm breaking down the formula so that you can see what's going on inside. The split function creates a column that's called result. And that result is just a text string. It's six, for me, it's 16,000 of these curly bracket to curly bracket strings. So record one has this curly bracket to curly bracket. Record two has something similar, but different information inside. You'll see here I have columns A, B, and C, which I purposely named. What I want to do is identify what's the information in column A and set it to its real column name, student. But I need to extract 2040 from that. So I can use the mid function. Mid simply allows me to uh, look at a piece of string, in this case the result, this whole thing. Then I set a starting point. In green, I have the starting point. It's going to search for where does the letter A slash begin. What is this starting point? From this starting point, I'm going to add four. One, two, three, four. It gets me to the colon. And for a piece of text, I do want to add one more so that I can start after this quotation mark. Next is how much text do I want? So now I'm at the number two right there. I want four. Well, how am I going to get that? I'm going to start by searching for the location of this letter B slash, and I'm going to subtract distance to letter A. So whatever this distance is, but I don't want everything in between. Because this is a piece of text, I want to get rid of the uh, quotation marks. So that's where those two come from. And I don't want to get up to the A. I actually want to get up to uh, whatever's after that colon, which explains the plus, uh, the plus four. And I'm getting 
rid of another plus two for the quotation mark and the comma here. So I end up with four characters here. Now, you might be thinking, this is so complicated. How am I supposed to calculate that plus four and the plus one? Well, I have figured it out for you inside this spreadsheet. All you need to plug in is the name of your flow, the name of the text string that you plugged into the last step of your flow, the text delimiter, what you wanted in between the records in your join step, the variable that's going to be temporarily holding the data that's returned, the collection that's going to be splitting up all of that text into records. All you need to program is the name of the actual column that you want, student points affect for me, validate it, is it text, is it a number, is it Boolean? And finally, you need to determine, is it the last column that you're going to be identifying? So it'll automatically uh, calculate this for you. And all you have to do is just copy paste this formula. I'm going to go back to Power Apps. In my get function, I'm going to paste, uh, paste it right in front of this semicolon. You'll see it needs some work in spacing. I can push shift return, shift return, and so on. So here's my completed function. Now that we're back inside the app, let me clarify a few more things. We're adding columns to whatever is being split up, and we're making sense of this piece of text. The student is a kind of text, so I need to compensate for quotation marks. Points is a number, so I can multiply by one to make it a number. Affect returns true or false, so I'm going to set it equal to one to make it true when it is one, and false for every other condition. Let's run the app. I'll click get. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, and it's doing a little parsing. Perfect. It's got all of my records. So what do you do with this? Well, now that it's a table, you've successfully brought in thousands more records than you could before. So imagine you could filter this, you could write back to it, because if you have the record ID number, you can patch more easily. Um, you could add, uh, you could sum up uh, different, different fields that you couldn't do before. There's no end to what you could do. And it was only within 10 seconds. So I hope you try this out yourself. And I'll be showing you more advanced ways of using Azure Logic Apps, uh, custom connectors, uh, so that you can perform something uh, that's that's even smarter. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting power apps, please subscribe.